Like a lot of other things that is usually overwhelming when having a baby, packing a hospital bag is one of the things that was overwhelming as well. I had started preparing my list for my hospital bag long back, but I kept putting it off and I was reluctant to actually pack the bag and get it ready because I just didn't understand what I needed and how much of something that I needed. It's a little bit confusing because we're currently in our third lockdown in England and the rules keep changing because everything is changing at the moment. Nothing is for sure or definite at all. So I kept looking at the rules, I kept thinking and overthinking and planning and pre-preparing and everything and eventually I've, um, I think I have nailed it and I have finally packed my bag about two weeks ago. I am now 38 weeks pregnant and my bag is ready to go to my car uh, in preparation for labour. So I thought this is a good time to share with you what I've packed, why I've packed it and how I've packed it and share some tips along with you. We are almost coming out of our third lockdown. The rules at the moment is that your birth partner can be with you during an active labour but cannot stay overnight um, if you and the baby are required to stay in the hospital overnight. So usually when you're packing for a hospital bag, you need to pack for three people. One is a mother, one is a baby and your birth partner as well. I've kind of packed it according to that. Let me just explain everything to you. First of all, this is the bag that I've used. It is a cabin size bag which is extendable also. Now, uh, this one has wheels and it has rollers and it can rotate 360 degrees. What I would always suggest is to use a suitcase which has rollers. I've seen a lot of people use weekend bags and day traveling bags. It is quite handy because it's very compact and it fits a lot in. I would agree that it fits a lot more than a cabin size suitcase and it is smaller than that. But it is going to be difficult for you to carry everything. So I always recommend using a suitcase with rollers in it. So I'm going to take this with me and I am taking my nursing pillow as well, which will go along with this. Before I pack this, I thought long and hard whether I wanted to pack one bag for myself and one bag for the baby. But then I eventually decided that I wasn't going to pack two different bags. I was just going to use one. The reason being, when you have so many different bags and you have different things everywhere, it's going to get overwhelming for you during labour and even after labour, especially when you need to pack all of your things back to leave the hospital. You have too many things to carry, you have too many things in your mind. It's easy to be clutter free with just one bag and to try and be as minimalistic as possible when you're going into the hospital and when you're coming out also. So one bag it is for all of us. So I have packed for myself, for the baby and for Lakshman in here. I've also used various different packing cubes in the suitcase so that I can differentiate different things. I love packing cubes. It's a game changer when you're traveling. I've had all of these things for quite some time now. Let me just show you the kinds of packing cubes I use. Um, I either use clear bags like this or I use packing cubes that has a mesh opening where you can see what you have in there. It's so much more easier when you have Ziploc bags and packing cubes that has a mesh cover so you can see what's inside. Usually it's your butt partner or worst case scenario, it's your midwife will need to find something from your suitcase for you while in labor or even after because when you're extremely tired or you're unwell or something has gone wrong and someone needs to get something for you out of that emergency they need to be able to see what's in there even if it is yourself who's getting dressed after the labor and you want to find something when it's just clear like this you know what's in there it saves you the time from having to unzip everything and search through everything or even remembering what you have in each bag so it kind of clears space in your brain power these packing cubes are ones that i've had for years now because i used to travel a lot before the pandemic I've used it extensively and it's lasted me for such a long time. So I've always had these and the other clear bags that I use like this Ziploc bag and even this Ziploc bag came with some of the clothes that I bought. This one came with the baby clothes that I bought and this one is from Sheen or some of the adult clothes that I bought for myself. I would always reuse these kind of Ziploc bags because you don't need to waste more money buying more plastic bags and you're not adding on to the pollution or the landfill by paying for more plastic bags as well. These kind of things come in so handy that I would always store it. So looking at the things that I have, I've got a pair of flip-flops for myself and I've kept it in a Ziploc bag. Although this is brand new and it's clean, 
it somehow ekes me out that I have to put slippers along with my other clothes without a plastic bag and I would always pack my slippers in a plastic bag and then put it in my suitcase. Then I've got a water bottle. This one has the hourly timestamp. I've got a similar one at home but I bought another one for my hospital bag because I want to keep everything in my hospital bag ready and have it in the car ready. I don't want to have a separate list where when I'm already in labor or when I'm already in pain and I need to rush to the hospital I don't want to have to search for things from my list and then pack it into the bag and then leave I just want to think about leaving straight away rather than having to think about other things In this one I've got all of my undergarments and I've got my cozy socks also I've got another packing cube here I've got two sets of pajamas in here It is the button up pajama that I have and I've also got a robe that I may need to wear over while I'm in the hospital. And finally, I've got a towel. I've also got one of these bottles. This is a Perry bottle. Apparently the hospital also gives you one of it, but it's not in this shape. And this is the most convenient to use. It wasn't expensive. I think it was about three, four pounds online on Amazon or eBay. So I got one of those and I thought it is going to be very very handy to use. I also got this postpartum pad. This game highly highly recommended. This is the always discreet boutique one which works as a mesh underwear and postpartum pads also. Um, I wasn't sure how much to pack so I'm just packing the entire thing. It's better to have a little bit more extra than to underestimate how many you need. Next I've got these two pouches of toiletries. Um, it may look as if it is a lot, but this is far, far lesser than what I would normally carry when I'm traveling somewhere. This one has all of my toiletries in here and it's all travel kits. I would highly recommend that you get something which is travel size rather than a large size. Regardless of where I'm going, whether I'm driving or flying, regardless of my weight limit, my space limit, I would always go with a travel kit because it saves you so much space and weight also when you're packing. I've got my regular face wash, shampoo, face cream, I've got a mouthwash and then I've got a dry shampoo if I wanted it, comb and travel size toothpaste and I've got deodorant and travel size lotion as well. I think that are some sanitary bags and I've got a shower cap. Those are just the basic things that I've got in here and I've got a travel toothbrush also. And in this pouch here, I've got some of my makeup items. Now there's no judgment when it comes to makeup, it's entirely up to you whether you want to use makeup or not. It's just very very basic makeup kit in there, like a lip balm, powder, mascara. And then I've already got travel brushes that I always travel with. These are things that I've had for a long time. And this one was a very recent purchase. I was so pleasantly surprised with this. It's such a cute thing. It's a stand fan. It's a table top fan or even a handheld fan. It comes in three speeds and you charge it with a USB port. I didn't originally think of buying this at all, even when people said that, but I noticed off late that I'm getting hot flushes and I suddenly realized if I'm extremely hot and sweaty during labor, it's going to be very, very uncomfortable or even during active labor. So I searched for this and I found this on Amazon. It is so good and I'm very, very impressed with it. These are the things that I've packed for myself and the next ones that I want to show you are the things that I've packed for the baby. Now you don't need a lot of things for the baby at all for the hospital. It is quite contrary to popular belief. First and foremost, hospitals don't want children to be fully wrapped up and bundled up in layers and layers of clothes while they are there. Because as soon as the baby is born, they have a lot of tests to run. They have to give some injections and vaccines and they have to keep, um, I was going to say unpacking, but not unpacking. They have to keep undressing the babies and put on the clothes and everything and it becomes inconvenient for them because they are always rushing for time. So the hospitals would always prefer to bundle the baby up in swaddles and they have their own swaddles. That's why I packed bare minimum for the baby. Now this one is a um, full body suit that I've got. So I've got two pairs of full body suit depending on his size and I've got two pairs of vest again depending on his size. I've got one muslin cloth, quite a big one which I can use to swaddle if I need it and I've got one cap to put on for him as soon as he's born. It is advisable to have a cap so that you can put it on the baby a couple of minutes after he's born to try and retain heat because babies lose their heat and their body temperature as soon as they come out. I've got a pack of nappy. Now with this nappy here, um, this is only a pack of 22. If you ever run out of nappies, the hospital will have plenty of it. So you don't need to carry so many different bags with you 
four nappies sake okay just one pack will do i was even considering taking only half of it then i thought i've got the space so i'm just going to take one bag and i've got water wipes some people would recommend taking um, cotton wool so you can use that with water but the hospitals recommend water wipes also. This one is 99.4% water so this is quite good. Let me pack all of this side back up again and then I'll show you what I have on the other side. I have a small zip compartment over here and I've put a few small things. Let me show you what I've had in here. I've got an extra long charger in this pouch and the plug to go along with it. I'm only taking my phone charger, I'm not taking any watch charger or anything else and I'm not taking my MacBook or iPad. A lot of people who know that they're going to be induced or who know that they're going to be in the hospital for quite some time will take all of these things either for entertainment purpose or because they're busy and they have a lot of work to do. I'm taking a box of paracetamol just in case I need it. I don't want to have to ask the nurses or the midwives and wait for some time for them to bring because everyone's really busy in the hospital and these things are quite handy. So you just carry it yourself. This is the only extra electronic stuff that I have. And I've got um, a box of cards. This is Monopoly Deal Lectron and I spend a lot of time playing Monopoly Deal all the time. It is really well loved. You can see that everything is torn and it's already ripping into pieces so I've had to keep it in a sandwich bag to make sure it doesn't fall off. This is just so I can entertain myself and kind of divert my mind from you know whatever is going on in case I need to be in the hospital for slightly longer than I anticipate. So I've got this in here and it hardly takes up so much space at all. These two are the extra stuff that I have and I've also got um, a travel deodorant and a travel toothbrush for Lakshman. At the moment in England, um, your birth partners cannot stay with you overnight at all. They can be with you during active labor, but if you and your baby are expected to stay in the hospital overnight, your partners can't. But for whatever reason, if Lakshman is going to be there for longer than anticipated, I've got these two for him. In this final compartment here, I've got the coming back home outfit. Coming back home outfit usually has a lot of thought put into it because you're bringing your baby back home for the first time. You probably have family and friends wanting to see pictures and everything and you're definitely going to be taking fast pictures also so people usually try and match the whole family you know color coordinate everything um, since I'm having a boy I try to color coordinate it my coming back home outfit is in here it's just a blue jeans dress it's not from Sheen but I have one of these Sheen bags so I'm just using this bag here I got this as a Christmas gift and it is a maternity dress postpartum you are not going to bounce back to your normal size at all. You, you will still look as if you're six to seven months pregnant. So I took my maternity dress to be comfortable. There's no point packing jeans. There's no point packing anything tight, uh, legging or whatever it is. So I just want to be comfortable. So I'm packing this. And I've also got one of these things. Now this one is one of those belly bands. It's to hold everything together. It's not because I want to look cinched, I want to look slim or anything like that. It's because once you've had your baby, everything is loose. Your organs are all trying to find its way back to its original place. So you want to be comfortable when you're leaving the hospital, when you're walking around. So I got this to try it and I'm packing that. And this is Lakshman's shirt. He's obviously not going to be wearing this shirt during labor. Even if we're not staying overnight, if we're leaving a couple of hours after the baby is born, he can then change into this shirt. And finally is the baby's clothes. This is a cellular blanket that I've got for the baby that I'll be using in the car seat when we put him in it. Um, I've got two pairs of clothes in here depending on his size. One is newborn and one is zero to three months. He's got cap, he's got mittens in here also. So this is purely his coming back home outfit which I will change him into just before we leave the hospital. That's all I've packed in my hospital bag. So this is the one suitcase that I'm taking, which has everything in here. And I'm also taking the nursing pillow here. If you're gonna be feeding your baby as soon as he's born, then it is advisable that you have a nursing pillow along with you so that your lactation specialist or even your midwife will be able to help you and show you how to use this. Um, I got this from my mom and papas and I specifically wanted this because it came with a bag that is easy to transport along so that you're not exposing this to all of the bacteria or you know just lugging it around as it is. So that's all I have with me and another thing is it is always advisable that your partner packs it. I found all of the things as in I made all of the list and I packed it but I gave it to Lakshman to unpack 
to find everything, to you know, kind of figure out where everything is and pack it back in. So he knows where everything is. When I need something, he'll be able to help me out with it, and I don't have to worry about it. And because I've only got minimal stuff, everything is in clear bags. I know it's going to be so much more easier to find. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. I've seen tons of these kind of videos, and I thought it would be nice to make my own video. And I also have seen a lot of videos where people um, show what they actually used from their labor bag after they've had their babies already so that's something that I'm considering if it is something that you would be interested in you want to see what I've actually used after I've had my baby let me know and I will record another video to show what I've used and what I've not used another thing that I forgot is a snack bag I've got a bag of snacks it's not in here it is outside it is actually hidden if I keep it somewhere um, exposed and open I know for a fact that I will finish it even before we get to the hospital so I bought a bunch of snacks like protein bars and biscuits and and knickknacks like um, sugary sweets and also chocolate buttons and some um, Powerade or even isotonic drink. Your rules and regulation will definitely change in different countries and different hospitals. Even in England and Scotland is so much more different now. So um, speak to your midwife, speak to your consultant and you know get advice from them and see what is required and what is not required or what is allowed and not allowed in the hospital. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and let me know in the comments below if you would like to see um, what I actually used in my hospital bag after labor and I'll make a video for you also. Until then I'll see you in the next video. Bye!